Hello, and welcome to the GBC Productions channel. This is episode 57. In this video, I will be taking apart a Nintendo 64 disk drive. This is the second part of taking apart the Nintendo 64. Here's what one of the discs looks like. I'm not going to take the disc apart, but I will open the shutter so we can take a little peek inside. It's essentially a floppy disk. This particular disk is SimCity 64. Physically, it's similar in size to a zip disk, but it's 64 megabytes. The disk gets priority over the cartridge, so if a disk is in, it will start that game instead of the cartridge. So let's take a look inside. It uses the Nintendo screwdriver. One moment while I take a look at what is still holding this shut. Okay, I got it open. What was holding it was some shock mounts for the drive mechanism itself. These are the little points that were in the rubber bushings. There's a couple of ribbon cables here, see if I can disconnect them. And there's a battery in there too. Let's take a look at this upper half first. I'm going to take this RF shield off and we'll see what's under it. seems kind of like it's made of cardboard, like the RF shields of the original Commodore 64 bread bin. I'm going to take this little light pipe out of here. Take the other half of the RF shield off. This one is actually made of metal. And here's the board. This actually also contains a floppy controller.
these are the two connectors that go to the floppy drive. These are the type that you slide it in and then push the little clip in to hold it in place. There's a couple of inductors here. And here's the battery. And it's a CR2032. No idea what'll happen when that battery dies. And I have no idea if that battery is any good. Should I test it? Sure, might as well. Just shy of three volts. Well, I may want to consider replacing that battery. Now let's get into the heat of the meat, the floppy drive mechanism itself. And then the rubber bushings are stuck to the lower half as well. Yep, it was. I've got it out. Now I have the fun of trying to figure out where the other end of this cable was hooked to. There's more RF shielding to take off, and then we'll see. I can't see from here where that other ribbon cable connected. Oh, there is a circuit board down there. I kind of see it. I gotta get in there. My connector is way back there. I'm going to take this cross brace off, which appears to be the park mechanism for the drive head. I have to be careful, I don't want the drive heads slamming together. I'm going to pause for a moment while I try to figure out exactly what I'm doing. I got the loading mechanism out. So this is what the disc actually loads into, and it opens the shutter on it, too. As it would slide in, the whole mechanism would shift backwards, and it would engage the heads. Here it is shifting. It engages the spindle motor and the heads clamp down on it.
and the heads would actually move back and forth as it's accessing the disc. This is the spindle motor. That's the board I need to hook up that other ribbon cable to, and then I have to figure out how it was routed. Alright, I got it hooked up and routed properly. Comes out just like that. It's a fairly standard floppy drive mechanism. And of course it is double-sided. The lower side is the only side where you can actually see the disc itself. For the other side, the drive does slide in under the housing. That's all there is to it. These are the shock mounts I was talking about earlier. Don't forget to subscribe for more, mash that like button, and comment below. Until next time, this is Uncle D from GBC Productions. Signing off.